Hi, I'm Heather McCammon Watts. I'm the manager of youth services at the Deerfield Public Library, and this is the Parent Cafe Raising Race Conscious Teens. And I am here with my colleague, Christina. Hi, everyone. I am Christina Bueno, she, her youth programming coordinator. Awesome. So, First of all, a couple of guideposts uh, for what this presentation is going to include. Uh, we are discussing how to talk about racial issues with teens, and by teens, we are meaning sixth grade through senior high. Uh, so first of all, it's so important that we all understand that these conversations are uncomfortable. Uh, please make yourself uncomfortable. This was <laughs> wording that Christina had. Um, and it's really important to remember that it's difficult to have these conversations, but we're all learning together and talking about it is better than remaining silent about it because you, we all need to process and air what we're thinking and especially teens. Um, be prepared, uh, there's not closure at the end. Uh, this is a lifelong learning process of developing cultural literacy in our youth and in ourselves. So we can model how to listen deeply to try to understand and to take the lead from BIPOC people. And BIPOC means Black Indigenous People of Color. Um, we need to be kind and respectful at all times and recognize that the environments that we surround our teens with uh, and the media that they are absorbing and the books that they are reading, all of that is steeped in uh, racial attitudes that we need to address. Would you like to add something, Christina? No, I think you covered everything, Heather. Yeah, I just love that part about please make yourself uncomfortable. Uh, you know, this is we're not ever saying that this is a comfortable topic to discuss or expecting that everybody is going to watch this and feel 100% like they can go out and have these conversations. But we just hope that this presentation helps you, helps you take that first step. Absolutely. And um, I am a cishet white woman. And so I recognize I do have a lens of privilege that I am not always aware of. Sometimes I do have those unconscious biases like we all do. And so I am open to learning and listening. And if you have questions or comments after this presentation, please email us and let us know. I would love to hear your perspective. Uh, I, you know, I'm always trying to increase my own awareness as well. Okay, so why are we doing this? <laughs> Christina, would you like to start? Sure. So, um, excuse me. Uh, teens are experiencing race as we all are experiencing race, right? Um, and the fact is that it is an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people to, to talk about. And so we do have um, teens, you know, going through their lives perhaps not really knowing how to bring up this topic with, with their parents or their teachers or their, their, fellow, uh, their fellow teens. Um, and so it's important for us um, as educators, as parents, as guardians to help our teens, to help all our children to really understand and contextualize race and racism and its place um, in, in our culture, in our, in our, uh, nation. I also really like, uh, there was like a quote that is about, if you are not the one that is talking to your teens about race and racial issues and racism and anti-racism, somebody else is going to be doing that. And so if you want to kind of be the first one to bring that up and to kind of set them on the right path, then you have to take that step. Um, you have to try and get over that uncomfortable uh, sense that you have. Yeah, and um, we don't really have a model for this as uh, teachers and caregivers and parents and community members because we, we ne weren't necessarily raised that way. I know I was raised that bringing up race uh, was considered impolite. 
uh, bringing up skin color was considered impolite in all circumstances. And uh, I was encouraged just to remain silent that that was, you know, the approach. And now we know that that is not the case. Um, they've certainly studied this a lot and science shows that it, it might be doing the exact opposite when we are silent, that it is entrenching those attitudes because silent, silence is most often interpreted as acceptance of the status quo. And as we know, the status quo uh, is embedded in a racist society. So we want to raise our teens to understand the difference of uh, differences, but uh, also how similar we are and how different we are and how we can celebrate those differences together, as well as to raise anti-racist teens that can stand up for their friends and their neighbors and who are emboldened to say something and to not be silent moving forward. Yeah, and I also think too, as our teens are, you know, they're going into high school and they're going into college, you know, their classes are going to become more discussion based than perhaps like an elementary middle school. Um, and so these are topics that probably will come up in a discussion at some point in their um, education. And so it it's nice to be able to help them kind of prepare to be able to talk about this um, and to really, you know, perhaps analyze, uh, you know, quotes about racism. Yeah, and I also think it's important social emotional skills to help teens identify that feeling you get when you know something's being said that is wrong or uncomfortable that goes against your values or your integrity or has the potential to be unkind or to hurt someone else, uh, to recognize that feeling and to act on it. I think that that helps in many circumstances, not just uh, issues of racial injustice, but any sort of inequality that they are viewing and seeing. Um, so the more they do that, the more they practice that, the better they'll get at it as adults. Um, and so that the next generation is, is more prepared to be able to discuss these issues with confidence. Um, so anti-racism, um, is a process of unlearning, co-learning, engaging, and enacting. I love that. I love that quote. Um, and that whole unlearning, uh, I find is difficult because we just assume a lot of things. And so unlearning involves teaching our teens critical thinking skills and questioning skills and skills to, um, again, don't just accept the status quo uh, without thinking about it. It's like, well, why is it that way? How does it impact me? How does it impact my friends? How does it impact my family and my community? And are those things different? And why are they different? I think those are all critical thinking skills. Again, this will serve them well, again, not just for discussing racial issues, but for discussing all of the complex issues of our society. Would you like to add anything to this slide, Christina? Um, I don't think so. Just, I mean, I love that the unlearning, the process of unlearning. And I feel like I relate to that even as like an adult, you know, there's, there's so much that we perhaps learned as kids or didn't learn at all. And it just seems like as we're hearing more about, you know, our history, we, we keep learning. Um, and we are thinking back of like, oh, they didn't teach us that, that at school, or they said something slightly different. And so, yeah, it's, it's so important to have those critical thinking skills to be able to, you know, be like, okay, well, you have to weigh what you were taught perhaps as a little kid versus like what you're hearing now and, and how everything is connected, right? How our past is connected to our present and our future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent. And it's very hopeful too, because it does, you know, negative implicit attitudes about people can be unlearned. Uh, mm -hmm. So just as we can learn these things and we do, and sometimes we learn stuff without even realizing it, we can unlearn it if we are conscious about it. 
So here are some ways to guide race conscious teens in their awareness. And the goal is ultimately for them to be anti-racist and racist racism interrupters. I like this graphic here because it gives us certain words of how we can deal with it when we do hear racist attitudes around us if we are in all white spaces um, and how we can be those upstanders. Uh, and this is great for adults too. I looked at this and thought, oh yeah, I need, I need to practice this. Um, what you just said is harmful mm -hmm. or what you just said is unkind. Uh, it sounds like what you're saying it, it has the potential to hurt people. Help me understand what you're thinking. I find that offensive. I didn't realize you think that. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, that's not funny. Um, that's not okay. Uh, I just think that those are all really important phrases to have ready to roll and to feel comfortable saying them in um, situations that are racist. Um, helping teens recognize their own privilege and unconscious bias. And a good way to do that is to dress it ourselves as um, teachers and, and parents and community members to be explicit again about sharing our values, discussing race with teens, and not only addressing our privilege, but also how we can use that privilege to challenge the system. Um, that's the next more hopeful step about, yes, we are privileged, um, but yes, we can use that to make things better for everybody. So I think that's an important piece of this. I did want to share just a small story about that privilege. Um, I realized with my own children um, that sometimes I, did, I was not explicit. And I just thought that they would absorb this, you know, idea of everyone's equal and um, diversity is beautiful. And I did share diverse books and media and games with them. So I absolutely did some of that, but I wasn't always explicit in my conversations about privilege. Mm -hmm. And an example of that happened when my oldest child was flying cross country for the first time by themselves when they were seven. They were going to New York, they were flying by themselves, and they um, had a temporary ID. They hadn't gotten their full ID yet. And they, we didn't know until the last minute, they were stressing out about it, what happens, will I get stopped at the airport? And I said, you'll be fine. Like, just I knew. You're, yeah, you present as a, a white <laughs> female person um, at the time uh, that you'll be fine. And that's when I, I stopped myself and thought, oh, oh my goodness, that's privilege right there. Like just that assumption that everything, you know, there's, there's not an issue here. And so then I explicitly said, the reason you'll be fine is because you're white and you have a certain amount of privilege when it comes to dealing with, you know, airport officials or any government official, they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I really wanted to be explicit and to talk about that. So that's the kind of thing, like there's all sorts of opportunities to talk about race in America. Um, also encourage your teens to include other people who are feeling left out. Um, find ways to volunteer as a family with diverse nonprofits and support uh, diverse businesses and, and artistic creators of color. Um, and then again, talk about it. This is why we're going to this restaurant. This is why I'm um, buying this artwork because I want to support BIPOC creators. Um, Discuss ways teens can get involved in volunteering to support BIPOC people in your community. Uh, talk honestly with them. They're old enough. They need to know about racial injustice and current events. And the most important thing is discuss your own racial journey and your own understanding of how it has impacted you in your life and those you know and love and how you hope it'll be different for the next generation and give them examples of what they can do. Always, always give them hope. Always give them some actionable item that they can do to move the needle a little bit. 
Would you like to add something, Christina? Uh, I was going to say, Heather, I think earlier you said something about that you kind of assumed almost that your your kids, you know, that we all kind of assume like, oh, they're going to they're going to know, right, that everyone's equal. They're going to just, yeah, like absorb that. Right. Because, of course, like that's how I think, like they're going to think like that, too, even if I'm not talking about it. Um, but I think that part of why sometimes that doesn't work is that the people who think opposite of you perhaps they're being loud and out about it. So your kids, your teens are then hearing those people and they're not hearing your side of it. Um, and so that, that's just another reason of why it's so important for us to talk about it, um, to not just be the first one to bring it up, but to kind of incorporate it as much as we can in, in our teens' lives. Um, just like you said in your, in your story, when you kind of, you took a moment to pause, but then you were like, the reason you'll be okay is because of this. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And it's, it's so hard to like acknowledge all our privileges. Um, you know, I, it just, it depends on where you're at and, you know, we all have different degrees of privilege. Um, and, and sometimes it, it, I know that it can feel I, I, it's difficult to think about sometimes, I think, to like acknowledge your own privilege because um, sometimes maybe it, it makes you feel bad, yeah. um, but that's okay. I think it's important to embrace that feeling um, and to use that almost to like fuel your desire to make things better, to talk about things and talk about your privilege to hopefully change the whole, I don't know, system of privilege. Yeah, and that I, I love the way you said that. And it, it goes back to being uncomfortable, like this whole thing is uncomfortable. Yeah. And so it's like being comfortable with being uncomfortable, like, okay, <laughs> this, this new, this is how it's gonna be, you know, like, every time I bring this up, but here's the thing, it does get easier over time. Like, I, I think that it, it does take practice and stuff, but over time, the vocabulary gets easier, the standing up gets easier, diversity audit of our library materials right now. And it's fascinating to me how I just didn't see it before. Um, I've been in libraries for over 20 years, and there, there were certain books that, yeah, I didn't recognize it as being problematic racial content then you have a relook at it through this new awareness and you see it and so I think it's it's a it's a practice and then and we want our teens to practice younger than we did uh, so that they can um, you know move the needle forward a little sooner than we did maybe yes yeah okay some books Ooh, books this is, all right. all right, Christina. All righty. So these are just a few of many books that are really wonderful and out there uh, for our teens. Um, these are just a few that I wanted to highlight. Uh, Stamped uh, is by just Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi. It's adapted from Kendi's adult book, Stamped from the Beginning. Um, I love like the little description of it is it says this is not a history book. This is a book about the here and now, a book to help us better understand why we are where we are, a book about race. Um, and I, I love that because it's, I mean, you're learning things about our history in the book and in other books like it. Um, but what it what it's trying to tell you is, OK, how does that apply to our current situation, to our present? Um, you know, it, it's like we can't change the past. Right. But we can learn from it. We can make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, and so, yeah, I really I really enjoyed this book. I think it's it's great for teens, um, middle school or high school. There is the adult version. So if you want to read along with your teen, you could do the adult version. They could do the teen version. There's even a new uh, like younger kid version for like upper elementary. So and it's also like different ways that you can approach the topic depending on how comfortable you are. Um, and that's, of course, a nonfiction. Song Below Water is fiction. It is a modern fantasy about black sirens. Um, it's about friendship and self-discovery. 
Um, and it's set uh, in kind of in our present day world um, in dealing with today's issues of racism and sexism. Um, so the, there's about two main characters, one who ends up being a siren and she ends up letting out her siren voice, her siren song at like a really terrible time. Um, and it's, it's about her and her family and her best friend kind of trying to navigate through the world as teens, but also as these like supernatural creatures. Um, one of the good ones is one of my favorites. It's by Maika and Maritza Mulit. And I, it's called A Shocking Powerful Exploration of the Lasting Impact of Prejudice and the Indomitable Spirit of Sisterhood. Um, it centers around three sisters. Uh, one, the main sister is Kezi and she was a big social activist um, and she ends up dying under mysterious circumstances at um, a social justice rally. And so it's kind of about that aftermath of her family dealing with her death, um, specifically her sisters. And the, her sister is kind of going through this struggle of seeing her sister being idolized almost or idealized, it being called one of the good ones. And she starts thinking, why is it that we only seem to care when it's one of the good ones that is murdered or disappears or something bad happens? So it's kind of going through, like, what does that phrase really mean? Um, and they end up going on like a road trip and uncovering, uh, like learning more about who her sister really was. Um, there's a super great twist at the end. So I really enjoyed it. I like zipped through it. Um, I, I would say it's a really great uh, realistic fiction. Uh, they Called Us Enemy is a graphic novel by George Takei, um, and it is a memoir recounting his life, his childhood, um, imprisoned within a, an American concentration camp during World War II. Um, it's his firsthand account uh, of his early years behind barbed wire, uh, the joys and terrors of growing up under legalized racism. Um, and it really urges readers to question what it means to be American and who gets to decide that. Um, it's a great introduction to the internment camps of World War II, the Japanese internment camps here in the States. Um, and it's just, a, it's, it's very accessible because it is in that graphic novel format. So it might be more accessible to certain teens um, as well as giving you that kind of visual and a more perhaps like digestible way um, to learn about this time period and this form of racism. Juliet Takes a Breath is available both as a graphic novel and as fiction novel. And it is about um, uh, Juliet who is a Puerto Rican uh, lesbian and she's from the Bronx. She ends up coming out to her family right before she's flying off to Portland for a summer internship with one of her favorite authors um, who she saw always as like a mentor and a role model. Uh, when she gets to Portland, uh, it's kind of about her journey of dealing with the aftermath of coming out and also meeting her idol and kind of realizing that her idol perhaps isn't isn't the mentor, the role model that she had hoped uh, this person would be. So this is one of my favorites because it's very, it goes, um, it deals with like intersectionality because it's not only about Juliet's race, but also uh, how she identifies um, being queer and yeah, just kind of like the overlaps of racial identity, sexual identity, um, and even uh, like regional identity. Uh, being from different types of neighborhoods, totally different states. Uh, and then finally, Things That Make White People Uncomfortable by Michael Bennett. Uh, you may know him as a Super Bowl, Super Bowl champion. Uh, he's also a fearless activist and change maker. Uh, he, I believe, originally wrote this book. Uh, there's an adult version, and then he has this uh, teen version. So a little bit more digestible for teens. Uh, basically, he uses his uh, experience in the world of American football 
um, to discuss uh, racism and police violence and the struggles of black athletes and their relationship to these sports institutions like the NCAA and NFL. Um, so great book for if you're really into sports, um, also uh, nonfiction, it's, you know, his real life experiences um, and just kind of talking about things that usually make us uncomfortable, right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. awesome. I want, I, yeah, they all sound amazing. Yeah. And of course there's tons more. So here's all our, we kind of split it up of like best ones for middle school, best ones for high school. Feel free to take a screenshot or contact us if you would like us to email you um, the whole list. Uh, they're all, like I said, I could only highlight a few, but they're all really good. Um, and there's probably tons more that I did, we didn't even think about to add to this list. Awesome. Uh, there's also, of course, lots of anti-racist books for adults. Um, I know I mentioned some of the teen books have like counterparts that are that were originally written for adults. Um, great way to maybe have a parent teen uh, book club or of course as adults you can always read any any level of books you can read the teen books as well. Um, but these are some really great uh, books for adults. Um, raising white kids bringing up children in a racially unjust America specifically if you're a parent that would be great. Um, why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria is really phenomenal. Um, and just kind of, you know, I mean, it, I feel like that's something that, that, that visual like sticks with you. Um, and it's something that you might have noticed, like maybe not a, a cafeteria specifically, but somewhere else. I, I know for me, quick personal story. I remember going to, um, a beach in Florida uh, when I lived there, my family went and it was so strange because you, there was such like a racial divide. There was like all the white people on one end of the beach and all the like black people on the other end. And I mean, it just like happened naturally. And I, I guess it was, you know, whoever you came with, I don't know if it was like a family reunion or like what, how it happened. Um, but I remember like when we, uh, when we like showed up, it was like, this is strange. Like it's so, it was like such a, a line divide. Um, but eventually we like all like mixed. Um, so, but it was, it was such like a visual that sticks with you. Um, let's see. So you want to talk about race is also a good one. Uh, all of those would be good to, to start your journey on learning about anti-racism and things that you can use in your conversations with your teens. They're wonderful suggestions. Thank you. Yes. Um, also, we put together a list of resources uh, that are on the internet for more in-depth understanding of some of these racial issues. Uh, and some of these um, sites have you know, conversation starters uh, to give you ideas on how to just get it going. Um, certainly we definitely want you to use some books to start a conversation, but you could also use an article that you find online. I often will talk to my kids about things via text. Uh, so that's another way to do it is to send them a link and then say, hey, what do you think? Uh, that kind of thing could be really helpful. Yeah. And I, I just thought of this, Heather, as you're saying, you know, it doesn't have to be just books. Um, but there's also some great videos out there too. Um, uh, you know, TED Talks, there's some really wonderful TED Talks that would be great starting out points. And I've just recently kind of gotten into TikTok. And there are some really great like race educators out there who are using that platform to, you know, do those like small snippet videos um, talking about an issue um, or, you know, an event that happened in our past. Um, and so those are also places that you can kind of look through and see what's a, what's a good video that will get your conversation started. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. And also because, you know, it's, it's easily accessible to teens. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think short, short things that just come up naturally is a really good way to do it. Uh, certainly, they're getting some of the academic stuff in school. Uh, but this is a good way to promote your own values as a family when you see things happening in the world, bring it up, talk about your racial lens, talk about your own journey towards racial understanding foster those interracial friendships with your teens and with yourself, <laughs> uh, travel widely, read widely, uh, and, you know, get out into the world now that it's opening up more and, and meet people and learn about their experiences. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Again, if you have questions, please email youth services at deerfieldlibrary.org. We really appreciate you joining us today. And anything further, Christina, you'd like to add? No, just thank you again for, for watching this video. And as Heather said, reach out to us if you have any, any questions or would, or would like us to find more resources for you.